Welcome to another episode of All Things Survival. <coughs> We're staying with knives because, hey, that's my thing. Well, you know, I've been kind of shooting down Chinese knives for a, for a long time. And, um, you know, I kind of have to, you know, I, I want to be as honest as possible here. All right. So I'm going to show you there are good ones and there are even bad ones and there are terrible ones. Um, so let's start it off right now with a terrible one. I, I was sitting around one night, and I hate to, to admit it, but I was bored. Nothing was going on. Nothing was on TV. So I was on Home Shopping Network, and I found they had this thing on there where you, you know, for like $19, you get like, I don't know, 1,900 knives or something. Anyway, I ordered it. And uh, this is what you get. Now, the blade design is decent enough. And the problem is the the look at that play. Look at the play in the handle. The workmanship it is horrible. You know, it's pretty enough, but it's it's just not made well. Um, it's gonna break if you go to use it. In fact I can break it right here, I'm pretty sure. Yep, just broke it. <laughs> so, you know, it it's it's not worth whatever you pay for it. I don't care if it's a dollar if it's going to break, you know. And the lockback, see, the lockback, you can't even close the knife without jerking back. <laughs> okay, so that one goes in the junk bin. Um, but let's go over to one that, that I got at a flea market. Now this one's made in China. It's not overly attractive, but it's not extraordinarily ugly either. It's just, you know, it's a nice little piece of laminated wood there. But, of course, now this is a switchblade. So, you know, it has its values. Now, the saw on the back is absolutely useless. The The shape of the knife is okay. It's a little sturdier than the other one. I made, I probably couldn't break this one just by, by pulling on it, but I, I might be able to. Now, look very closely here. Let me see if I can get this up here. You see here where... I can get this turned right. It's really hard looking at this screen, get this thing right. See the gap between the blade and the handle. See, that is a huge point of weakness. So, you know, you have to be careful with that. You have to look at that. How closely does the handle fit onto the knife itself? Um, it, it, you know, it's a toy. You know, it's a switch blade. So, you know, I've got some good ones and I've got some bad ones. This happens to be a bad one. Well, I should say intermediate one. That's got a nice little belt clip on it, but... You know, why keep it on your belt if you really can't use it? Final for a uh, for a lockback knife, folding knife. Uh, this one has got a very nice shaped blade, fits the handle nice. This is not a bad little knife. It's still got that play, still got that moving around. Um, if you can hear that, that's uh, and look at the, the distance between the handle and where the blade mates up. Um, you still got the problem with the, the interlock, which I happen to like that kind of locking, but it just needs to be made a little bit better. Um, frost cutlery, made in China. Um, you know, pretty much a piece of crap. All right, crap bag. Now, long knives, the thing everybody loves. I brought these two out, and I'll tell you, I've used both of these on my farm. All right, I have a little small, I don't even know that you'd call it a farm, but... You know, it's a little small piece of property that my house is on. And I've used these. I, I use this just for general work. It's a nice, heavy um, knife. It gives a good heft in your hand. It's got a pretty decent little saw blade on the back. You know, the, the shape of the knife is very good. The, the edge is kind of gone after all the work that I've done with it. Um, it is a hollow handle, and it, it comes off, as you can see. So you've got a little pill bottle full of, I don't know, fish hooks, who knows, and um, the handle's completely hollow. And you got a compass on the end of your handle, so, you know, it's your Rambo, standard Rambo knife. Now this is an interesting attachment here. I don't have the, the um, sheath for this anymore, but the, the sheath that it comes with has a little connector on it that slides up through this, and you take the sheath, and you hold the sheath in one hand, the knife in one hand, you collapse them together and it actually works as a wire cutter. Um, so, you know, that's a pretty nifty. And this is a strong little knife. 
to, to not be a full tang knife, this is a strong, serviceable knife. And yeah, stainless steel made in China. Okay, so just goes to show you, not all Chinese knives are junk. And a better example of that is perhaps my favorite Chinese knife. Um, this is a knife made by a company called um, Chuck Away Cutlery, I believe. You know, I can't really see that. My eyes are just too old. But the design of this knife, it's heavy, it's big, it's got a nice thick blade. Um, sorry about the wind, folks, but I can't do about that. Uh, I had at one time a pretty handle. I've since abused it. Um, a little bone crusher on the end, which of course is of no use unless you know, you're buying it for fighting or something, which is silly. Um, a good brass bolster, and I'm getting eat up with bugs out here. Um, really, really nice shaped blade. So this is a good Chinese, a full tang, full tang. And I've dug with this, as you can see, it's not in the best condition. I'll leave it outside my shop. But I have dug with this, and I think I might have paid uh, $5 for this knife. I've chopped down saplings with it. I've notched two befores. I've cut wire. Uh, everything that I wouldn't do to my $100 knife, or any one of my $100 knives, I wound up doing with this. And it says surgical steel, and I don't know how much of that I believe, but you know, I suppose it could be. Um, and that was one of the local denizens stopping by to say, hey, as you heard. So there you have it. You know, the thing about knives, it's like anything else. You know, you can pay $150, $200 for a knife that is of absolutely no use whatsoever. Or you can go out and buy a knife for $20 that winds up being the best knife you've ever had in your life, you know. But the thing with Chinese knives, it's hit or miss, you know. <clears throat> Would I trust my life to this knife? Yes. But only because I've used it. You know, I know that it's of good quality, that the metal's good quality, that it holds a decent edge. Um, the handle's comfortable. It's got a good weight, a good heft to it. Um, I would hunt with this knife, set up survival camp with this knife, chop down saplings for a shelter, make fire with this knife. You know, there's nothing I wouldn't do with this knife. Um, this one, you know, would I trust my life to this one? Probably not. I haven't used this one extensively. The saw looks really cool and it's nice and sharp. I've never really tried that. I've made some fires with this, as you can see. I've done some digging on some roots and that sort of thing with this one. But um, I don't know, you know, probably. If I had to, absolutely, if it was the only knife that I had. But um, just remember, when you're picking your knives, you know, buy, buy some of these Chinese knives. Just, you know, look at them, make sure they've got a nice thick blade, Make sure they're, they're securely fastened to their handle. Get a full tang if you can. Make sure the handle fits you comfortably. Make sure the blade shape is a usable. This is a clip point blade. Make sure that it's usable. Um, and what you might find is the metal's so soft it doesn't hold an edge for very long and it's a waste of money. Or you might find like this little jewel. Uh, this is a little jewel. This was worth all of the few tiny dollars I paid for it. And I've had this 12, 14 years. So. That's it for Chinese Knives, and uh, stay tuned for the next installment. Thanks. This is Garth. I'm out.